Okay guys, I'm here with a paid coaching session from Zyra. This is a Plat 1 NA Soda Q game. Um, so you're Zyra with Electrocute. That will give you decent harassment damage in lane. And you're against a Kaiser and a Janna. So, Janna's pretty vulnerable to your harassment throughout the laning phase. And Kaiser's also her main weakness is range targets as well because she has quite a short auto attack range i think janna kaiser in itself is pretty weak i think if this gets to the mid game with her with an ardent sensor and if you haven't punished the kaiser enough i think that's where you might see issues with the kaiser scaling plus the janna appeal protection as well but you should be hard winning this lane the only concern that you should maybe have is the cane being around the bot side, being sneaky and getting past wards and things. So you're going to have to prioritize and making sure you don't put any wards in the lane. You put them around the river and around the drake and make sure you stack up on a bunch of controls as well. Because that's literally the only thing that's going to stop you in bot lane is, is the cane pick here. Lucian as well is, got a, is a really nice, you know, if you can catch someone with your roots as well, uh, you can follow that up as well. You can follow that up with your roots as well. So that should be a decent amount of burst damages there as well. Depending on what GP5 the Janna goes here as well. If she goes coin, she's going to be staying back. But if she takes blue, that's even more to your advantage because she's going to have to overextend a little bit to get gold per five from her from her item. So if she does take blue, you know she's going to be playing up front a little bit more. So you don't need to go to her because she ha she's going to want to come to you. You can eat, you can basically use your plants a lot easier to get gold than than the Janna can get gold from for herself. So that's something to keep a little tag on during the laning phase buying session. All right, let's jump into this. Okay, it's not good that you're both at okay level one. It's always good to be active at this stage of the game. You should do return. And you are back in time to set up for the blue buff with your seeds if needed. Okay. You won that train. <laughs> um, after they backed off though, you should probably immediately just come back to here anyway to do some seed stacking. But just in case the Graves does come to the blue buff. But, you know, at this point, you know, the Graves isn't going to be cut, coming down to blue because it's going to take too long. So you should just go straight to lane now. Get some of your seed passives now into lane. I think you guys are hovering here just in case they do. Um, Try and steal it. Okay, so the Janus started coin. So her W harassment is a lot less. You're doing some decent auto attacks there. Would have liked to see a Q come out there or an on the Kaiser. Especially that would have procured your plant there as well. Still have Q ready. I think you should definitely be using your Q a little bit. Your full mana, for example, anyway. So you might as well just throw out a Q anyway. Not only for that, but also for mana flow band if you have it. She looks like you don't have mana flow band on that. We're going to have to check your runes on after the game. But yeah, usually you want to do a couple of cues here at least anyway. Definitely could have been laying out a little bit more harassment here. What'd you go? You get Q W. I think with the Lucian's E, if you do catch off like the Janna when she's on solo HP as it is already, if you do catch the Janna being a bit uh, being a ahead in front of the lane again, if you do catch up with the roots, that's basically like two summoners a minimum, that's the heal and the flash from them because if you catch off the Janna far up in the lane and you root her the Lucian's going to dash straight in you could probably dump an ignite there as well and you're going to do a Q, a Q there as well so it's going to be a super quick electric Q proc there as well and there's also another reason why you should be using Q at even level one because you're doing like a couple of auto attacks but you're not getting the third thing off so a spell would proc the electric Q and give you a little bit more DPS in lane here as well The only thing that's going to harass you here is probably the Kaiser W, and that's basically it. You will have to overstep a little bit sometimes to be able to get down CC. That's decent here as well. I think... Yeah, don't flash that, but your jungle is getting a lot of attention here as well, so you got kind of distracted here. And I think... 
if you had E, for example, in that situation, like with the Kaiser here, she would have been caught out pretty easily. Yeah, like, here. That's actually a really, really easy E. Your, the E would have propped that plant off as well, so that would have been extra slows here. Then you just do Q, Ignite, Auto Attack, Auto Attack, Auto Attack, and then that will definitely get the heal and flash of Kaiser. I don't know if that would kill. Depends on how how quickly Lucian reacts to this and how many auto attacks you manage to get off. Um, but you can definitely get double summoners here off the Kaiser if you have E here. Because all you actually get, instead of the E, you just get one more plant out instead, which is like an extra about 70 damage anyway, which is the same as the E, but you don't have the root. Um, so meanwhile, that the Janna managed to help basically stop your jungler from doing his own buff there. I don't think you can chase off here. I think all you can do here is if you have wards, which you don't, you would want to ward around about it's really hard to ward against a cane here actually in this situation because he can just go straight from behind here. I think the only the only solution to this situation instead of trying to chase up for the cane because the, the Velkos is already under tower anyway, so he can't react anyway. He can't move out of his lane anyway. The um the Echo has lane priority there. So once as soon as this situation happened here, you, I think you just push in this next wave here, and then you might need to just recall. Because now what happens here is that it's also because you're chasing off kills that you definitely won't be able to get anyway. But now this lane is frozen in a really bad position. If this Kaiser really wanted to, she could just keep the minion wave here. And I'm kind of intrigued to see what she does here. Yeah, she is pushing it back. But if she just choose to freeze it here, it would be a pretty bad issue for you here. Anyway, so from, from you guys moving up... You lost a little bit of XP and CS there as well, and a little bit of lane pressure as well. Because you could have been kept, you could have kept harassing this Kaiser down a little bit. Or all backed off and just recorded and picked up some contr uh, control ward and some health potions or some boots if you may have had enough. You needed to do a fair amount of lane harass anyway. So a lot of fights are happening in the river right now. I think you were fine to rotate up to that because you didn't know how big of a fight that was going to be. I think that's fine. Unlucky on the root miss, but I don't think it would have changed anything anyway. You guys just need to plan now on how you're going to recall now on this lane. Their kill potential potential isn't great here. Yeah, your Lucian's low, but I don't think the Kai is in theory should better get a kill here. You can't... you. Okay, this is where kill potential will come through though. The only thing in this lane that's potentially scary for either team is your E. Now if you hit your E, then that's great, you can follow up on that. But if you miss it, this exact scenario will happen with the Kai's will and then counter everything and just start unloading damage onto you or to the Lucian. It's like the equivalent of a Blitzcrank Kirk, it's not as long as a cooldown as, as that. But if you use your E like that, can't think of the word like freely like that then it just opens you up to a counter and engage from like that it would have been better just for example in this situation here before that shoot your electric cute is ready here at this point so all you should do here is just do qw your q is probably going to hit here most likely and then you throw out an auto hit here as well that's a straight up electric cute proc and then that may give you a better indication of how the Kaiser is going to reposition herself to get out. And if you can get an E after that, then that's a potential kill range there with Ignite. But there's no, I don't think there's there's much point putting an E out there straight away. you got to whistle them down a little bit more first. Yeah, the Q after that was, was kind of miles off as well. That's the better Q. And then it's the E that should come through there. That's perfect. And then you just ignite auto attack straight away. That should be a kill. You didn't need to flash after that. That's unlucky you with the Janna shield. That's really unlucky. You 
You've got a hard push in here now, though. I'm not sure if you're talking to the Lucian saying, WTF, why didn't you fall off or something? But this new, this lane now needs shoving as quickly as possible to deny the Kaiser as much CS as possible. So you need to be Eing and queuing this mid casting minion line here. You need to be helping pushing this urgently. Or alternatively, if you two were duo, you could have actually left this wave and just recalled straight away because there's actually technically more more enemy mini blue minions here than yours. So this would have been slow pushing back to around about here. So by the time you recalled, you would have had a big wave here to collect up upon. Either situation would be correct here. But because it's solo queue and <laughs> communication with your AD carry on that play would be extremely difficult. The best play here is just to shove it in as quickly as possible and you need to be helping this. You both need to prioritize and recalling here right now. And you're wasting a lot of time. You could have denied a lot of CS here because now this lane is, uh, this lane is frozen here for like no reason here. Um, this is super awesome for Kaiser. So she wanted to freeze here, she could. She kind of is freezing. It's, she's done a couple of extra auto attacks here. But yeah, she's freezing the lane. She's denied you basically um, a wave here. She could have denied you that kind of minion actually, to be honest. So that's kind of lucky for you guys. But yeah, uh, you need to just shove that wave in a lot quicker. Straight away also, you're coming back into lane with boots and a frost fang. How much gold did you have when you were in the fountain? Yeah, it's an awkward... You literally just had enough of Boots and Frostfang. Lucian has two control wards. I think you might be able to get away with not having a control ward. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I would probably do the same. Frostfang and Boots is fine. It's kind of sucky sometimes, but... Uh, alternatively, you can you could maybe go double control ward and a health potion instead of um, Boots, but... I can understand why you do go boots, but you need to tell the Lucian to put the control ward in the brush. Probably maybe from behind. Because the, the, the biggest way that Kane is gonna gank your lane is and the same with like a kindred that's level six kind of as well. It's like they they jump through these walls and the cane will just come straight through through here. So if you have a ward there that will give you some indication if he's there. Um but yeah, you get that Lucian to put that controller down as quickly as possible. It's really nice that he bought two for the lane. It's a shame you missed out on that kill on Kaiser because that would have given you the gold as well for at least a couple of control wards. That's a really nice catch as well. I want to see you moving forward and auto attacking at the same time. Just a little bit earlier there, but yeah, it was fine. That was good. Really nice catch. Okay, you got two options here. You either freeze it here or you shove it in and recall. Because you have no control wards, I would be tempted to push this in as quickly as possible just so that you can go back and get a control ward. And that would be it. But a couple of controls and the half push would definitely be fine. If you do pick up one or two CS, that would be... um. That would also be a tome, especially if you can hit the tower a couple of times. That's another really, really nice route there as well. The enemy are making a lot of missteps. So yeah, now you definitely shove this in. You need to shove this in as well. Just queue the cast of minions here. Okay. That's fine too. Right, now the Graves wants to do Drake. This is possible here. You need to make sure you... I want to see how you use your plants here. Okay, okay. rewind. Okay, so against Mountain Drake and Infernal Drake, the Drakes do a cleave attack on every auto attack. So it's like a conal attack. Now, what you can do, especially, well, the, the Cloud Drake's the hardest one for Zyra because it's got the fastest auto attack. All the Drakes do two um, damage to plants, and plants have four HP. So each plant can tank two cone breaths from any dragon. Now, the Cloud Drake's the hardest because it's got the fastest auto attack, so your plants go down super, super quickly. Mountain's the easiest because it has the slurs auto attack. Now, the Mountain and the Infernal have um, conal AoEs, so you need to put one plant very close to tank the Drake on one side, 
and then you spawn another plant on the complete 180 like of the dragon so you put one at the front one at the back um so one plant will tank two hits and then the drake will then spin around and then it will tank two hits again so your 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 plants can tank for breaths here and if any of your passive spawns nearby as well that would be super awesome as well so your plant yeah like with that extra part there that's really nice as well so yeah plant will be able to tank a couple more hits there but you're taking the hits for yourself you're trying to stop the cane from coming in here though you just gotta nuke this down there I think that was decent what you were trying to do zone zoning out there really nice that Lucia managed to put the controller down there you do get the dragon you do get the kill nice so yeah the only only negative of part that is just like it's just little things like that can sometimes make a big difference especially like on low health health situations and on plant 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 tanking management it's the same with um with herald as well the herald has a cleave attack sometimes um so that you can um he'll hit both plants so you obviously want to spread out your plants there as well and also you can actually like you can solo as long as you're like doing okay in the game on Zara. You can actually solo Herald. It does get pretty close, but you with the plant plant tanking and kiting, you can solo the Herald with the same sort of mechanics there that I was mentioning on the dragon. Brand and Zara are the, are the best neutral objective takers in in the game for supports. So you go back to base, you bought Sork Shoes, then you bought a Tome, but then you, you bought a Ruby Crystal. Okay. So you bought a Ruby Crystal, you sold the Ruby, you refunded the Ruby Crystal for a Tome. I can understand that the, the Tome is much better than the Ruby Crystal, but that also leaves you on 13 gold. Um, you need control odds. You really do. You've got, you need to, to start snowballing this lead now. Damage isn't a problem on bot side. You guys are going to get, like, decently far ahead now. Um, especially with the Infernal Drake. The only thing that's going to stop you now, in bot side at least anyway, is what we mentioned earlier, the cane. The enemy, any enemy jungler is going to just stop you guys. The, their bot lane synergy is terrible with the, 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 the Kai's and Janna early. So you just want to snowball that. Make sure that you or even allowing yourself to be able to even overextend the lane so that you've got that vision secured. So I would consider either going, just buy a couple of control woods and just leave it and, and a health potion. Or you buy Ruby Crystal and you wait in base for about 10 seconds for a control wood, which could be reasonable. Um, I think I personally would do the Ruby Crystal and control wood, but I think you definitely need control wards how close are you to completing your quest here yeah so you're a bit a little bit under 400 so it's not the right time to, to go red trinket yet so yeah okay but you, you definitely need control wards now at this point in the game right so you come back into lane by yourself here it's going to be extremely unlikely that you're going to get tower dove here and now you just hit level six I would personally just spawn a couple of plants around here just to slow down this wave a little bit. Even if it's just to do like a Q and then um, do a Q and then just do some W's over on the Kaiser. Because then it will like distract the minions a little bit and buy Lucian time to get into lane. And I might freeze the minion wave off a little bit away from the tower as well. <clears throat> So the only person who's got kills really on their team now is the Annie. So it's something to bear in mind for later on in the game. Okay. I think... I'm just trying to toggle it Fog of War now for you guys. Pretty sure Kane just walked past the war top side for you. I just wanted to check here. Yeah, so you can see that the Kane on the minimap was going up through here. Yeah, and you can see like the he hit the cone here as well. So you can see that on the minimap. So you know that it, the cane is top side right now. So now you should be starting to think about how to play aggressive here. You've got about a 30 second window here where you can be aggressive here. 
So yeah, then you don't want to start making some couple of plays here. Um, don't go crazy, but yeah, I mean that's that's okay, adequate try there for the route. Um, I would probably just start off by whittling them down first though with a Q and W. There should be another kill. I think you're so far ahead now that the kind of like slow little mess up there of that combo didn't really make much of a difference at all. Okay, so now you need to get tower, you need to help push this in. Don't worry if you take a couple of costume and minions CS, no one's, well, no one should care at least anyway. Right. Scouting out this, there's no point scouting that out because you know that the cane's up here now, so you just need to shove this in as quickly as possible. Also, another thing as well, it is worth just doing a Q here just to spawn your plants because the tower then will start to aggro your plants and your plants will just, you know, it will just think, yeah, you are doing that. That's nice. Yeah, because of the, the tower then tower shots the casting minions there as well. Just speeds this process up a little bit. Now you recall and you got, uh, you got to swap. You could either go mid or top, but you need to then start having a little bit of a focus around the Herald now. You want to keep snowballing this a little bit. Right, you got control here. You went double tome though. I guess that makes sense. If, yeah, you didn't have the combined cost for either the haunting guys for an, or an oblivion orb, so double tome's fine. It's, it's, it's worth it. I do that sometimes too. And it's good that you got a control ward now at least. Yeah. Mm, I don't like this control ward placement here because you want to gonna you're gonna want to be more aggressive here. So wards need to be pushed up, not brought back, because this is like a defensive ward. This is like you could have a normal ward here if you're worried about like a cane coming through here. But honestly, like you should have like a normal standard ward here. And when you get into the lane here, I'd recommend putting a ward. You should do a QW here in this brush here. Just to check if anyone's standing there waiting for you to face check. Which then would immediately tell you that there's a control ward there. So I'd be cautious about taking that out. But you could max range to take that out with your plant in the brush. And then you could do another QW over onto this ledge here. If you want to the place super safe. And then get a, a standard ward over there. That will give you ward here, ward here. That will stop any flank coming into the Velkos. That will give Velkos a lot of protection here as well. Or for yourself if you and Lucian do end up mid. Um, and then you want to bring your control ward. That was your only control ward. You really want to bring your control ward up to the the objective here. So either control ward straight into the herald pit or into this pixel brush just to secure vision around this little area here as well for when you hopefully inevitably do progress onto the herald. It will secure that vision there. Because this is a pretty defensive, defensive ward. This is the kind of place you put a control ward if at the very start of laning phase for like a, the mid laner or if you guys have like been pressed up a lot, if that makes sense. I would say that was a defensive ward when you should be playing a little bit more aggressive at this point. <clears throat> okay, you did the Q and W for that ledge then. That's good to see that you're using that to scout out a bit here. Lucian is under a little bit of pressure here, so you do have to move down. It's a shame that no one's covering down for bot side. There isn't anything for you to gain as a duo being down to bot side because there is no, no Drake. Uh, if you've got your ulti, ulti isn't up yet. That was a decent catch though, but you are by yourself though. Lucian wasn't in range. If Lucian was close, you probably would have picked up a kill there. The one thing I would say about this play is, is that you just literally just cleared out wards here. Because this ward here, for example, is a fresh ward and they obviously know that you're there clearing wards. So you should question yourself why the Kaiser is suddenly running towards your face because she must know that you're there. So that must that should send like warning bells in your head that like, okay, this is just going to be more than just Kaiser. Um, I think after you do an E here, you should just run away here because it's too suspicious for it just to be a like a new face check kind of thing. If you had your ulti though there, which you would have in like three seconds time, that could have been quite nice. Maybe you thought your ulti was up, because if your ulti was up, that would likely be enough to send it over for a kill, because it would have given your plants more health as well. 
and they wouldn't have died so easily there. I think you need to relax a little bit now. You are quite low health. And you did just see the cane bot side as well when he was around about here. Alright, here we go. Flashing gauge. Okay, so you're definitely dead. Hmm. I mean, you weren't aware that the cane was here anyway in the first place. And I've just realized you've had two frost fang ward charges when you've been moving down from mid to bot. You weren't actually planting wards down either. That's something that you should be considering doing, especially when you were in this brush. Like, you want to get a ward there, or at least anyway. So I want to watch this flash engage. Um, if this was just a 2v2, I think this would be reasonable. I think the flash is probably slightly overkill. I think she's so close to you anyway that your flash doesn't really do a whole lot here anyway. For me, it's like if you land the E, then get out of the right frame. Just get it in slow-mo. Like for me, it's like either... You land it like here when she's moving forward. Or you don't bother at all because you are incredibly low HP. Um, that is something to like be careful about anyway. I don't think this is worth it for your flash. I think you could probably just attempt to make an E here. Or even start off with a Q and see what happens. Um, but to go all in is probably slightly too much. Um... I don't think there's too anything dramatic here here though in that sense except for the fact that your warding isn't your vision from yourself hasn't been like as suitable enough throughout the game at the moment especially against the cane so you die for that hopefully Lucian doesn't die it's your first death of the game um out of 30 minutes it's not it's not dreadful you've been doing a decent job in terms of catching out the bot lane at least anyway, but you don't want to make too many more mistakes now. I think you're doing the right thing here now. You're pressuring the mid. Graves... Well, Yasuo picked up the Herald, but Graves and Yasuo did the Herald, so that's super big now. So you don't have to worry about that objective. You can next now take your, your focus now onto the, the Drake that's just spawned now. So now you want to set up your vision around the Drake. And actually you bought a start watch instead of another control ward. I think start watch later on is, is fine. But because you've gone the double tone route and a ruby crystal, you really want to finish off that item into probably an oblivion orb. And hopefully that will give you enough money for control ward as well. Which it should have done. So a little bit more priority and control is coming up from you because you've only bought one in 14 minutes. I think from my own experience, at least at this point, I would have probably would have bought about four. Maybe more depending on how often they're getting cleared out. Oof, there's a lot of damage coming out from them there. You have to you can't turn this around. You just lost half your team, you're gonna have to give up whatever objective that you have to here. Team just got demolished there straight away. The only thing you can kind of consider doing here is pushing this wave out so that it, it's going to take more time for them to take the tier 1 here. But that's all you can really do in a situation here. They're going to get the cloud drake. There's no point fighting over that. Just pushing this wave and then... If they dive you, it's probably your best bet here. Try not to stay too far away from the tower though. I think by now it would have been a good thing for you to take to just the Lucian to go mid or top by now though. Once the gain is no objective to fight on down bot side, there's no Drake, there's no tier 1 enemy tower here. The next GZ objectives to take is with the mid and the top and you have got a Herald so you can just work together as a team, as a unit to punish them heavily in the team fight and then use the Herald and down in one of the lanes. 
Because right now you're not having much impact on the game because you have already demolished this bot lane. Just staying, keeping them demolished isn't really doing you any favors at the moment because it's, that job's already done. You need to move on to the next one. And now it's getting the objectives down. <clears throat> I think I think here is the perfect time now just to rotate to mid. You can't push any further than this towards their tier 2 because they actually have a really fed jungler and mid laner. So if you get caught out being overextended bot side, then you need, you're need you both dead. So you need to go into that mid solo lane now. You need to tell the solution to back off. This is way too deep now. Not saying anything too bad at the moment. We should Carol will not one tap this tower. Stopwatch is a good use here, yeah. Stopwatch paid off quite nicely there in the end. You need to escort this Shelly though. You you stay. You should stay here. You have to stay. Um this is too big of a push for you to recall on. You have to stay in here. I know your health is only in 10 to 15%, but this is a game changing macro move here. Even if you're standing max range and peeling off, so it forces them to use flashes for you, you'll probably get them killed for that alone. Okay. So you need to get the tier 2 mid, it's a shame you didn't get that down. You did go the Oblivion Orb route now as well. Decent wave clear there. It's a shame you got caught out by the echo um, shield there, and you have no ult up either. Just want to watch that situation there, actually. Because the Velcars has decent wave clear by himself anyway here. Yeah, I think I think what happened there is that I think you couldn't see the E from... I think it's the E, the shield from the echo, until it was too late when you're in mid-cast. Yeah, that's just a little bit unfortunate there. Just got a little bit outplayed there. But having something also, and she's going to rewind quite far back to that play where you're on 10% HP. How many wards did you have? You've got two wards here. Yeah, so even though you are 10% HP, you can actually make yourself quite useful here. You got one out of three wards planted. So, for example, when you've got the enemy to one tower down, having a ward around about here tells you a lot of information about rotations and seeing if the enemy is recalling and things like that. So you should have popped one down here straight away as soon as that tower's got taken down. And you got one more on the plant down, so you would probably want to cover the flank because the Annie is top side right now. So the, the Annie's pathing is she's either going to keep pushing through here or she's going to roam from top to mid to catch your team out so you should be putting a ward like in this brush here or around about here to be able to give you more information of where about Siani is as well so you need to be using your wards a little bit more often as well it's been a couple of times you've had charges on your on your sight stone and you haven't used them um if you are recalling for example you can use the the charges from your gp5 while you are recalling, it doesn't interrupt the recall. So like here, for example, you could have put down a ward while you're recalling. It wouldn't cancel your recall. Pretty cool tip in case you didn't know. You can do the same with that with the uh, the trinket one as well. <clears throat> so you get caught out mid, you die. Right, let's fast forward and see you res again. You got another control ward, you go and see the Artem, I believe, for Zonyas. Which will help against the cane. The cane is getting pretty fed now. Unlucky on the route though there to be honest. Kane's playing a really nice game at the moment. You got your next objective on the map is gonna spawn in 50 seconds as Baron. You probably can't make a play for that. And then after that is the uh, is the Drake. So the Drake's probably looking to be your the next objective coming up here. I think you need to start respecting 
the, the damage. What may be in your mindset right now is because you beat bot lane so hard that you think everyone else on the team is going to do damage, not necessarily out of arrogance, but just because of, um, like, how it is, if that makes sense. So, yeah, just start respecting some of the enemy team's damage now at this point. Which I think you kind of have in a way, by buying buying the stopwatch and working towards the Zonius, but just be careful with the Echo and things like that, and the Cane. They're going to be your two biggest problems this game. And lucky on the max range either. Yeah, the Echo wants you. I find this a lot when playing Zyra. The enemy really just put a, a target on your head. Okay, this is huge. You got one, two of the enemy team. You lost Yasuo. Yasuo hasn't got TP right now. What Drake is spawning? It doesn't say. That's annoying. You should be working here to make sure this tier 2 is guaranteed for your team. And then you want to... Now. <laughs> this is something actually that like the... Did she sneak in through minions? Like a board here would have helped you a little bit of an indication at least anyway if there weren't the minions there. But I don't think any of you guys realize that this Annie was coming in from behind here. Like here there should be in like a max range E and an Aussie straight away and with some W's as well to spawn some plants. Yeah. I don't think any of you, all three of you didn't notice that. At least it ended up being a one for one. Okay, you've just respawned. You don't have any control words again. You can't buy a time. You can't buy an amplifying time. I know what you're buying it for. You're buying it for the other component for Zonyas, but you need control words. The only thing that's stopping you from snowballing this game at the moment is appropriate vision because you've been called out a couple of times now from lack of vision. Control words for... This is an Infernal Drake. I mean, that's super important for control words alone. But we'll see you've got Baron on the board as well. So if you do manage to win a team fight, then that's extra vision secured. You should have a stack of three control words at this point because you definitely need minimum two for one for the Drake and one for the, the Nasher. But you're probably going to want another one as well to have guaranteed vision of a certain spot as well. So that should be three control words in your back in your back pocket right there straight away. Okay, I would have done things slightly different here. Here, like here, should be like a QW, just to scout the area as well and see how many people are behind that. And also, you probably want to put a normal ward from over here to over here. So stand on the edge of this wall here and pop one over the wall here. I don't think I've seen you do many or or any QWs since level two. There's a good placement of your ulti though there at least. That was good of you to do that. Um, yeah. Entering squishy Zyra support at this point though. Just want to watch that bit again. You do. You are missing a few too many E's though this game as well though, to be fair. Yeah, that damage. If you can maybe return the kill, it's probably worth it. It's a shame you lose Velkos there as well though. I'm just going to fast forward this because you died here and obviously you can't have any impact here now at this point. Mm -hmm. Te team actually cleans up super nice there. Team Gaswo got a Quadra. I think... Yeah, you get the, the Drake here. I mean, your, t your team is guaranteed to get this Drake any at this point. I think you shouldn't bother trying to come down here and... and your next focus immediately your attention should be focusing onto the Baron. So by the time you get about here You you know for sure that the dragon's gonna be done by your team anyway at least um, So you should start your attention straight straight away by 
clearing and either clearing any vision that you have they have in your own jungle from that last fight you do have your oracles up and then and or going straight over to the baron start setting up vision around there make sure you've got a um replenish your ward here as well for mid lane rotations and just start getting the baron set up as well you've got the scuttle here that you could potentially kill as well to encourage your team to start doing that baron because it does definitely look, it does seem like you've got baron potential coming up here So you do kind of do that, it's just kind of slow. You don't have control wards still as well, which is paramount for these objectives. You really, really need control wards. Having no control wards at this time in the game is like, is the is the, the biggest crime you can do as a support. When Baron is up and you've got no control wards and, and no priority vision in the river, it, it's, it's not good enough. It's really what's holding you back right now. Vision is honestly king, especially in these sort of like these games where you're just you're you're edging ahead but not completely yet. Vision can easily tip the scales because it means the enemy has to face check more. It means you got more chance of doing the objective as well by denying vision. So yeah, at this point here, I want you to, I want you to replenish your ward in this mid lane here to see those rotations around. It's definitely a thing you do, it seems like you're not used to doing, but once you do it, once you start doing it, you realize the benefit of it and it becomes becomes natural. Um, you probably see I don't know if you've watched any of the words games, but um, it's got even to the point where people dump control wards now in the middle of the mid lane just to clear out that vision because it is the it is the literal most important ward to see rotations in the entire game. So um, make sure you put wards in the middle of the lane. I think I imagine in the years time even in solo queue people will be putting control wards down in the middle of the lane to, to deny that vision because it is extremely powerful. But I think I, I think this is probably the main issue you have right now. I think yeah, sure you miss a couple of these. We all have, sometimes have bad games where we miss our skill shots and things like that. But the the main issue is definitely seeming with um, lack of control wards. I can respect the Zonia's pick for the cane in particular, especially if they're going for you. But um, you still have to pick up those control wards. So right now. The enemy jungle is down and the enemy echo is down. Their best play, well, they, their bot lane is non existent at that point, really. I mean, the Kaiser does have the bot items, but she's extremely far behind. And the only real threat is Annie. If you had control ward here, this would be so easy to do a Baron. It really would be for your whole team. Yasuo has TP as well to come into this as well. Hopefully, you guys are edging towards that as well. It's just a shame you can't give your team the extra security. Over the Baron as well because you've got no um, control ward. Janna's distracting you guys in a really nice way. That could have been Baron. You guys should have just done Baron straight away there. Nuked it down. And it's slightly sad to see because there should have been a Baron there. Hopefully in this next recall you... No, you can't just buy one. How much money have you got left? You've got 250 gold left. <laughs> you can't just buy one control ward. No. Oh, you can't see that on the screen. My bad, my logo's in the way. But yeah, you can't just buy one control ward. You have to buy more. Uh, that should be a stack of three. Well, if you can secure an easy Baron at this point, you can easily end the game at this point in the game. Nice route into ulti. That was definitely worth it to kill their jungler as quickly as possible there. So that takes any Baron possibility of, regardless of this fight. That was a really nice any engage there though. Nice Sonya's, nice flash away. Jenna had to commit to all to kill you there. So who's left? AD versus AD? Awkward. I mean, yeah, Lucian has slight advantage here. Tier 3. Beautiful.
I think you played that situation pretty nicely, to be honest. I think that's been the best um, fight for you so far this game. I don't think you could have played that any differently. So your team's currently up to two Infernal Drakes. What's this next Drake spawning? You know Kane's in the area. Um, that control ward's really bad. Whoever put that control ward there, it's not you. But whoever put that there, it's not covering the back end of the pit. The, the, the ward needs to be like kind of in more where like this egg is here. This dragon egg. And you should be aware of that. That that ward is not in the pit enough to see the back line of wards. So in that situation here, you just put your control ward at the back of the pit there. Just to make sure that any wards at the back are cleared out. But yeah, as a support, you should know that that ward's not in the, inside the pit enough here. And it's a third inferno here as well. Alright, you do use oracles. And that is your control. No, you did put down. So you got three infernals. That's huge. Especially with double AP on your team as well. What's that? 24% more damage? More AP? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I'm zooming way too fast here. What happened here? So they're poking up on the Yasuo yeah, here, you see the cane zooming on here? Yeah. I guess you prefer to prioritize spells down rather than Zonya Zing, but jeez, that damage. I think that would have probably caught me off guard as well. In the ideal situation there, you should have just Zonya straight away. But I think you now know next time, like if the cane does come zooming on your face like that, you just Zonya straight away. On the flip side though, for them going for you, that's four of them dead, so your team should better pick up something up at least. This is what I mean when you play something like an AP mage. For some reason, you just got a target on your head. Um, but yeah. Um, in your build, you just went back to buy. You bought a ha haunting guys, which is fine. But you bought a blasting one when you need control wards again. We're back to the control ward issue again. That really needs sorting out. I'd be interested to see how many controls you buy in a um, you buy in this game. I think we're getting on a bit. I'm trying to trying to, trying to speed up this game a little bit because um, it's just a lot of the same little things here. Kane swoops in, one shots you, and the lack of appropriate vision on the map. I think it is once again criminal that you haven't got control words here as well for Baron, especially when it's up. You've got your ulti ready here. This needs to go straight down. Oh, that's a quite a big whiff there on your ulti. I think your Zonya's there. You had no choice but to use it there. I think your Zonya's use there is fine. I think what you need. You you got nice plant usage here as well. If you put your ult straight away over here, not only will you ult four members of their team and knock up at least a couple, but these plants at the back will start will be enhanced and get double HP and their duration refreshed. It's a shame that your ult lands like that because your plants do not get enhanced and it only hits Annie there. That's a real shame. That really is a big, 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 big miss. Annie also survives there as well. That's huge, actually, what happened there. Because it means your team might actually get wiped from that. Okay, he's packing a little bit of a punch there, but... Yeah, that was a huge whiff on the ulti, that's a shame. Once again, I'm trying to speed this up a little bit. You still have no controls on your kit. You are setting up the Baron, but like, you're getting wards down here, which is great that you can see the Baron and things, but... You really should be putting yourself in a position to do the Baron. You really need control words.
Yeah. So you guys go for a Baron play here. At least someone on your team did buy a control for it. Now you lurking off here is perfectly fine. I think this is the right move for you guys to do. It's a shame that Lucian isn't here. It's a shame there isn't a ward here in this brush actually. You do apparently have three wards placed. Just trying to work out that one's yours, I believe. I think yours are the books. So this, but that did that ward see the Annie going in or not? Because that's going to be crucial information here. Red side. Yeah, that should see Annie coming through, right? Right, so you're sitting in this brush. You know Annie's here, right? So you can predict this movement. You have to predict it because if Annie gets in range of you, you're, you're dead. Ulti, stun. You can see she has a stun ready. And you need to predict this max range E. It should be fairly simple. As soon as she gets into this, this bush here, just E as if she were, 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 is in it. And then you have your double plants down. Use everything. Q, ulti, you do not stand near her. You back up straight away as soon as after you've done that, just in case she's in range to do tibbers on you. Because this is the biggest thing that's going to interrupt this Baron play as well. If Annie gets into here with an AoE, you guys wipe and you guys lose Baron and give it to the enemy team. Alright. This is way too late. No! Yeah. That was literally worst case. Right there. Yeah, you have to do max range E here. You have to. Yeah. And you miss E anyway as well. And it does mean they get to collapse on you guys, the Baron, as well. And you do have your ulti up as well during this point. See, so the back-to-back, -back, two really big mechanical misplays coming from you as well. Not including the um, macro misplay as well for them. The lack of control woods as well coming out of you as well. Yeah. Because that blasting wand in your inventory isn't going to give you much extra damage at all anyway. It's turning into the right fiesta though. Okay, so now they're pushing onto mid. You've got your ulti up still. Kane's coming kind of zooming in here. She, I'm so, wow, I'm amazed she managed to get those zonias off. Holy. I think he might still die here though. Yeah, back to back deaths. It's always the worst feeling. Right, so you're respawning back in again now. I think because we the think the time's starting to come up. I'm just gonna try and speed through this a little bit more. You still don't have controls, by the way, from the Baron. You, I'd be really. I'm gonna actually. I think what we can do here is just. Um, I think the same things are coming out now. I think the 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 biggest thing here is the. The lack of control woods, I think we've already established that. Um, I think hopefully the little few mechanical tips that I have suggested to you should help you in your, your couple of Zara games, like the, the plants at the dragons, um, the control woods that you need to be placing down, having huge stacks for that, having more priority and that in your inventory. Um, and things like having to do like the max E. I think being in this brush here is pretty smart. I just think you, you had plenty of time and uh, on this Annie coming down into this brush that that should have been like a lockdown and I think this game has escalated f from not just for, it's, it's games enough to fiesta and Kane's doing ridiculous amounts of damage anyway at this stage but and there have been a couple too many mistakes from you that have allowed it to, to get the team their enemy team back into this game so yeah it it does it has turned from a very easy early lane lane victory, which there hasn't been too much default there apart from not prepping from the cane from not having wards for the cane. Um, I think generally you did a a decent job there. Like if you keep playing like that in lane with better warding, you'll be easy D D four D three. If you play enough games to the end of the season. Just everything else is is the problem is is after that is is the um the little mechanical tricks that you might not know about the things the mechanical things like the, the Annie coming to the brush and also the controls the controls the controls 
it's, it's, it's I have to reiterate that a lot because it is it is mainly down from your vision that's impairing you and your team from being able to secure the objectives that you should be doing a lot safer as well. So hopefully that helps you out. I am very very curious though, so I'm going to quickly check onto your game for control world purchases. Um, stats. <laughs> yeah, this is a 55 minute game and buying four control wards is not enough. You've got to compare that with the enemy Janna who has been buying control wards. She bought 18 that game compared to your four. Um, I think that puts it in a really good perspective. I think 18 is a decent, decent number. Maybe even 18 is a tad, tad on the lower side, but 18 does seem like a reasonable number for a 55 minute game. But four is definitely not suitable and you shouldn't be getting out control warded by your jungler and soda queue anyway with, with a five there as well. So that is definitely something that you need to focus upon a little bit more. Um, this is why I have difficulty with the vision score as well, because even though the Janna bought 18 control wards, um, she has a less vision score because of the, the wards placed down is less, but she also destroyed more wards. I don't like the vision score at all. I would highly recommend people not pay attention too much to the vision score itself, but focus more on wards destroyed and control wards purchased because the control wards purchased in particular is like the biggest thing here uh, for your games. But yeah, four control wards purchased is probably around about the 15 to 20 minute mark, probably at the very latest tw 20 minutes, four control wards purchased. And then yeah, we're talking about multiple Baron potentials here, multiple Elder Drake's potentials here. So that should be like, escalated through the roof on priority and control wards. Um, you'll definitely at least before you buy that sixth item as well, because you are an AP mage. So you could buy that sixth big item at the end there, like a death cap or something. But I hope that coaching session helped you out and hopefully it helps anyone watching this as well. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, 